Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with another Scratch tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to put our Learn Scratch tutorial series to the side for just a second because in this lesson, I want to talk about what's new in version 9.2 of Assimilate Scratch. We have some great new features, updates, and overall interface enhancements that I can guarantee you're going to love and be able to slide easily into your current Scratch workflow. All right, so as you can see, we are in Scratch. If I click on our splash screen, you'll see that I am running version 9.2, build 1031. Keep in mind that if your build doesn't match mine, don't worry. I am working with a beta version of the software, so your version might be a newer one. All right, so let's head into our Learn Scratch project, and I just want to point something out here briefly on the construct module, and that's right down here, a little button called Live Looks. Now, what is Live Looks exactly? Well, Live Looks is going to let you match looks that are created on set using Assimilate's new live grading software called Live Looks. Now, keep in mind, don't, we don't really even need to know anything about Live Looks for this lesson. We're going to have some dedicated tutorials that will launch with version 9.2 of Scratch or very shortly thereafter that's going to go in depth into Live Looks and how you can work with it inside of your project. Now, for us, the annotation tool is where we're starting, so let's head on over to the edit module. So let's turn the annotation tool on. I'm simply going to navigate up to the top here. I'm going to click on annotate. And once the tool itself is open, we can activate it one of two ways. What we can do is we can actually turn the annotations in the viewer on by simply clicking on it right here. Or what I could always do is just simply click on the pen and we're now all set to go. So I'm just going to pick a color. Let's just pick red and I don't know, maybe the waterfall is a little bit too blue and we need it to be a little bit more white. I could circle that. I could write something on the screen. What makes this tool actually very powerful is especially for users that use a pen and a tablet is you can now actually get in and write things on the frame for yourself for later reference. Now, once you've gotten in and written all the annotation that you want, what we can do is simply close the annotate tool. And if I don't want to see any annotation that we have on screen, I can simply just toggle it off like that. Now, it's still there. Once I turn it on, you'll actually see right down here that I actually have two pieces of annotation here. Now, I don't know what's with that other one. We've got an X there, and then we've got the circle with the X. What I'm going to do is just jump down here, and I'm going to remove this one. Now, to do that, we can do it one of a couple ways. I can simply come down and just clear this frame. I'm just going to draw another one on here as well. Let's just draw something in yellow, maybe just another arrow here. Okay, So you can now see that we have three pieces of annotation that we can jump back and forth between quickly and easily. And again, like I said, we could simply turn this off and turn it on because once it's on and you hit play, what's going to happen is it's actually going to jump onto the screen for a second. So if you're working, we're fixing the shot. Oh, clients come in. You know what? Let's just turn this off so we can now play things back and they won't know that anything's actually there. All right. So annotate a great new tool for you to work with. What I'm now going to do is to jump over to the color effects module. And the first place that I want to go is down to my lookup table. What I'm going to do is just load a lookup table from the desktop here. I downloaded some free lookup tables from small HD. I'm just going to say open. We've just applied one of them here. And the new feature inside of the LUT category is the ability to clip levels with softness. Now, I want to mention this here so it doesn't become confusing. This tool is not a LUT clipper, all right? Remember, the LUT in the case of the color effects module is the last step, and I'll call it our color chain. So what's happened now is that this tool has been added actually after a LUT has been applied. So you don't even need to have a LUT applied to work with this tool. Now, the best way for me to show you how this tool works is to turn my scopes on to get a look at our waveform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the lows because you can see we still have a lot of detail in there. So if I was to take the low value and just to start to clip it to there, you'll see very hard clip. But to be honest, I don't ever really want a very hard clip. I'd really rather have it soften up a little bit. So now I can come in and just soften that up so it's not as hard a crop right off the blacks in my shot. Now, what also makes this tool very cool is the fact that you can adjust it on an RGB 
level, so basically adjusting the RGB values all at the same time, or we can split that all up to adjust the red, green, and blue separately as far as clipping goes, as well as the softness values. So you can see a lot of detail for you to get in here and work with. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset that again. Let's just turn our scopes off. All right, now the next big noticeable update is right over here in our primary category. Now, as soon as I select it, you're going to see it right off the bat. Take a look at our color wheels now. A lot more vibrant, a lot easier to see, and just really an overall better user experience. Now, what's important to keep in mind right here, you'll see that we now have color blocks that circle the entire wheel which can give a better direction, for example, DITs in order to hit a very specific color that they might be after. Now, to be honest, if you find this a little bit too bright, don't worry. You can always dim them down by simply clicking on dim right there, and you'll see it'll put those brightness levels back around where they were in the previous version. Now, something else that I want to point out is you'll notice that instead of the color A and color B wheels, we now have a much simpler pre-saturation slider and a post-saturation slider which work exactly the way that they did before but they just look better and they're a lot simpler to use. Now last but certainly not least inside of the primary I want to show this to you as well if I head on over and I undim this you'll know when we're getting in and adjusting knobs it's always hard to tell which direction you've actually turned the knob if you're only making very sensitive and very minor adjustments. We'll take a look at what's going to happen now if I was to get in and adjust one of those knobs. I now actually have a little arrow that's pointing me in the right direction. So even if I've spun that around a couple times, you'll see I'm always going to be told exactly what direction I've turned that knob in so I can take a quick look and know exactly what I have done. All right, now, two more things that I want to talk about. Let's navigate right down here to our tool sets and switch on over to our dailies tool set. Now, I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to reset this here just to put everything back the way we had it originally. And I'm going to switch over to dailies. Now, if you look carefully, you're going to notice that we have two new parameters that we can get in and adjust inside of our dailies tool set, and that is curves and vectors. Now, if I head on up to the color parameter, you'll remember in the previous version of Scratch, we really had access to two tools in here. We had access to the CDL wheels as well as the CDL sliders. Now, I kind of spoiled it a little bit. If I go back in there, you'll now see that we now have access to LGG or lift, gamma, and gain wheels. Now, why is this advantageous to us? Well, what we used to have to do in a couple steps. Now, because I'm not actually working on a panel and I'm working on a mouse, it's just easier for me to sort of, uh, you know, dry demo this, which is previously if I wanted to do something like, you know, lift my blacks a little bit, if I was working with my CDL wheels, I'd have to make an adjustment to not only offset, but to slope as well. While working with our lift gamma gain wheels, I would only have to make an adjustment to lift. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that even though we're working this way, everything is still working with CDL values under the hood, which means you can still create CDLs from your grade, assuming that you stick to using the color wheels. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention, and that is you now have the ability to add multiple output cards, even mixed cards, such as Black Magic, Bluefish 444, and even AJA, and you can configure them differently in terms of resolution, frame rate, and color spaces. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Kev, why do I even care about that? Well, maybe on set you want to be able to view, you know, standard HD as well as HDR. Well, this is going to give you the ability to do that by having support for multiple cards in your system. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.